Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update. It is the Earth Master on this Wednesday, January 24th, 2024. A couple 24 numbers in there. Uh, about 12.33 p.m. California time here. Latest activity. Shows some movement up into the Alaska area. Still seeing some uh, earthquake activity up there. We did see some movement overnight. Uh, well, actually, early this morning, my time, uh, into the New Zealand area. 5.1 coming in. About 6 o'clock my time in the a.m., uh, this was felt uh, broadly over the area. Uh, it was relatively shallow at about 10 kilometers uh, below the surface. The GeoNet servers here that monitor the uh, New Zealand activity reporting that as a 5.2. So just a little bit larger. And again, that was about six hours or so ago. You can see the uh, felt reports out here quite nicely across the uh, North Island area. Uh, even down, maybe even to the uh, Wellington area, it looks like. Some reports being reported there across the uh, South Island area. But for a total tally, look at this. 5,000 people reporting uh, some shaking going on here about six hours ago, mainly in the North Island, New Zealand area. Um, some moderate, even some strong shaking be being reported from this quake. So a little bit uh, larger quake activity here than what we've seen recently around the New Zealand area. Of course, uh, I think we all know that New Zealand sits on a major plate boundary, and of course the Hikurangi subduction zone sits offshore here uh, of the North Island coast. Uh, so we'll just keep an eye on it. There's really um, not much else around the New Zealand area that I can see in terms of anything above the 4.0 threshold. Um, looks like we've seen maybe a couple threes and some two since then, but well, maybe a four in there as well. Roughly about this time uh, as that 5.2. Goodness. So I'm, I'm guessing that maybe will be an aftershock. A couple of these may be aftershocks here. But either way, we'll continue to watch it. Um, you know, New Zealand's been one of those areas that has not really caught up, so to speak, in terms of the uh, plate adjustment out here across the, uh, the interaction of the plates. Uh, North-south of them, um, where we see a lot of movement, uh, has in the past year or so, but New Zealand's just kind of been having these smaller uh, activity events. So it looks like uh, definitely seeing a little bit of aftershock activity following that 5.2 this morning. Uh, mainly showing up, it looks like, across this area right here on this seismograph station. There's going to be the main quake, uh, and it looks like a little bit later a four-pointer. Uh, but there's quite a few other quakes in there as well. And again, this was about six hours or so ago. Uh, it looks like it's calmed down quite nicely since then. Not noticing a whole lot of uh, further earthquake activity following that event. But again, we'll continue to watch that uh, for some possible movement. We have been seeing a little bit of a unzipping pattern here across the uh, Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench, and now New Zealand. Um, so just kind of keeping an eye on things out here of uh, the area. Yeah, this one here from um, last night, 5.1. So we had a 5.1 last night and then a 5.1 earlier this morning. And then the most recent one here, uh, 6 o'clock my time here. So just kind of keeping an eye on that. Uh, up north here, 5.0 coming into the Papua New Guinea area, 68 kilometers deep. Neat little adjustment there. Uh, let me check out the last 30 days here of activity. In terms of what I mean by the plates moving all around New Zealand, there really hasn't been a whole lot specifically around this plate boundary. And New Zealand sits right there on two plates on the fault on the plate uh, plate boundary here. Excuse me. Uh, and this amount of earthquake activity, at least according to the USGS, is very minimal. Uh, they're seeing twos on occasion and some ones and some threes, but uh, you know, 5.1. That's somewhat of a of a moderate magnitude earthquake here and um, a little bit larger than what we've seen in a little while specifically in that area and the 30-day chart here like i say it doesn't show a whole lot but there's more earthquake activity uh, in the new zealand area uh, than what's being shown but we'll keep an eye on it, it it's got to make some further adjustment i feel all right uh, what else we got here across the globe still seeing some movement up here into the china area uh, where that strong earthquake struck here a couple days ago uh, now. Um, 
Looks like mostly fours out here. Let's see what we got for a total tally. Has it been over a week yet? I think it has. Let me see. No, it hasn't. Goodness. <laughs> feels like it. There was a 7.0 back in the... That was only two days ago. Goodness. It feels like it was a week ago already. My mind has just been uh, scattered a little bit with terms with uh, the schooling that's going on right now. First week, first week of the new semester here at the college. So I've just been racking my brain a little bit. Uh, but either way, aftershock activity continuing here around where that 7.0 struck here uh, a couple days ago. Let's see what else we got here across the world. Uh, getting a little bit of movement up here across the Kurokamachaka and the Japan Trench. This earthquake coming in from last night, it looks like. Uh, we did have another one south into the Japan Trench here, 4.6 at 62 kilometers deep. So a little bit of movement uh, this morning so far. Again, that's older quake there from uh, yesterday afternoon. I believe this one is as well. But uh, either way, still stay, staying uh, somewhat active out there across the western Pacific and up into the Alaska area. Still seeing, uh, still seeing some decent quake activity up here. And uh, there's been a couple new swarms uh, away from that area that seen that five pointer here in Alaska uh, a couple days ago. It's going to be this region right here. We've seen that 5.3 around the Aurora Lodge felt pretty broadly, uh, fairly broadly across the area, including the Fairbanks region. Uh, but since then, I've noticed like a couple different swarming areas, one up here and uh, a couple other smaller ones up away from the Fairbanks area. So regional stress uh, somewhat high out here across this region. Uh, not for sure if it's leading to something bigger or not, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it with this uh, new swarming activity. <coughs> into the Pacific Northwest uh, outside of Seattle 2.3 coming in this morning that looks like it's on the uh, eastern side of the Seattle fault uh, this area is I think they've done a couple studies on this and uh, this one's very capable of producing uh, some decent sized earthquakes and it, it running underneath the area of Seattle uh, this could be a little bit more dangerous in terms of damage compared to even the Cascadia out here I know the Cascadia is going to uh, produce a bigger quake than what the Seattle Fault could, but uh, in proximity and location here, this fault system runs right underneath Seattle, which could be a little bit more damaging compared to a Cascadia quake. Don't get me wrong, Cascadia is going to be a, a big one, and the damage will be uh, high as well. But All right, uh, Northern California, a couple more earthquakes this morning, including a 2.9 uh, just off the Northern California coastline. This is around the triple point junction of the plates. Got the Juan de Fuca plate up north, Pacific plate here, and the North American plate uh, off here on this side. So, uh, yeah, 2.9. A couple other quakes here. Been kind of noticing a little trend of deep movement quakes and then followed up by uh, shallow earthquake activity here. Uh, so this is another area we need to keep an eye on uh, for some further movement. Southern California. We were looking at a little bit of swarming here last night uh, around the Salton Sea area. It's going to be these little three earthquakes here. Doesn't look like we've seen any major migration of the movement. Uh, just a little handful of smaller quakes up and down the plate boundary, the Imperial Fault, Brawley Seismic Zone, and just off the San Andreas Fault here. Uh, a couple small quakes there from yesterday, but again, doesn't look like too much activity today. <coughs> This was at 2.6 from last night. All right, up into the Yellowstone area of Wyoming. Not a whole lot showing up. Uh, let's give a double, <coughs> double glance here at the activity. Some of the maps are just coming back online, it looks like. Not for sure what happened to them, but uh, they um, were offline for a day or so. Hopefully they come back with the correct measurements. But as far as earthquake activity, not a whole lot. <clears throat> All right, moving on here. Let's see what else we got. Texas, oil fields still getting hit out here. The Oklahoma area, most of this movement here from, uh, yeah, we had a couple this morning, it looks like, but some of that activity from yesterday outside of Duncan and outside of the OKC area. Uh, just right around Union City, seen a couple quakes this morning. Uh, not for sure if there's any oil, uh, old oil fields out here or not. Hard to say. Looks like maybe some type of wastewater pond right here. Some tanks, holding tanks, and um, maybe some down here as well. 
So some of those oil fields getting hit there. Uh, eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, Caribbean plate, handful of smaller quakes around the Puerto Rico area. Let's see what we got for the South America region. Uh, right after the update last night, we did see some movement stir up here uh, with a 5.4, but really haven't seen too much uh, larger movement out here since then. 4.2, somewhat deep here uh, into the, uh, well, underneath the San Antonio de los Cobres, Argentina region, 202 kilometers deep for that quake. Uh, let's see what else we have stirring up out here. Hawaii. Keeping an eye on Kilauea Volcano, right? Not a whole lot going on, though, for now. Looks like uh, two small earthquakes uh, earlier this morning. At the same time, 1.9 and a 2.1. Uh, let's double check and see what we got for the uh, latest informational statement from the HVO, which was put out today, it looks like. The volcano is currently not erupting and um, still just kind of chatting about the small amount of earthquake activity. Uh, tilt meter has leveled off. I believe we were looking at a, a little bit of a deflation event last night. Let me pull up that uh, tilt meter real quick here. Hopefully this their website is working. I don't know. They've been a little slow with the USGS recently. Don't know why. UWE. Here we go. Last night we observed the uh, deflation event leveling off currently right now. Uh, that's at the summit region of Kilauea Volcano. Here's the last 30 days. Um, general trends here since September have shown um, a couple days or a few days of inflation followed by uh, a day or so of deflation and leveling off and then further inflation. Uh, that's what it should come to here uh, probably tomorrow. I don't know if that's going to kick back up tonight, but... Uh, throughout the day today will probably level off and then eventually go up here tomorrow and further the inflation the repressurization of the area below uh, with magma and uh, it's been building it's still at its highest level since 2018 the 2018 eruption there at the Kilauea volcano right now minimal earthquake activity so not a whole lot going on there uh, for now but got to keep an eye on it uh iceland about uh looks like about 30 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours a handful of quakes around the Grindavik area just outside of the town there it looks like uh no major changes uh, obviously we'll see a lot of earthquake activity prior to any uh eruptive fissure activity the tilt meter here looks like it's uh it's hard to tell it almost looks like it's leveled off slightly in the last couple points last couple runs but we're still elevated, still inflated. Uh, and that goes for the area below the Grindavik region as well. Let's double check that and see where the Grindavik region is right here. Here's the one that's not operable anymore. It got ran over with some lava. Um, so it's going to be this one right here. Still fairly high. Look at that. About ready to go back off the chart, it looks like. Uh, and may be readjusted down here, similar to, to that event. But uh, yeah, still, still kind of inflated there. Really no new update from the Icelandic folks, unless they just recently put it out. Let me see here. Kind of chatting about a flood. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in a different region of Iceland. But far as the earthquake activity goes, their latest update was put out, uh, looks like a few days ago. All right, uh, space weather activity, and then I gotta get going here. Still crackling with some C flares overnight, looks like. We still have a threat of M flare and X flare probability. 10% and 55% chance for the M flare. Now these sunspots are uh, ginormous. Goodness, look at the uh, visible disc right here. You have no problem spotting these if you have a solar telescope here. Uh, of course, with a, you know, we gotta have a solar lens to be looking at the sun, uh, but they are easily viewable here if you have a solar telescope and um, fairly large 3559 here uh, the most recent imagery looks like it is scooting off a little bit further towards the northwestern limb remaining somewhat stable um, in terms of complexity also this region down here 
uh, but this one's just about out of sight, out of mind. And, um, you know, a couple days from now, these will no longer be a threat in terms of any geo-effective activity. Uh, but I still think we've got to watch a couple of these uh, for some stronger flaring. Uh, but a look at the solar flare chart here, the graph itself still has that instability, that, that crackling or popping, so to speak, I like to call it. When it looks like that, that's when things are... You know, it reminds me of a lot of static, and then occasionally you get an impulse large flare, and it's still remaining uh, fairly unstable. So keep an eye on for maybe some flaring in the M and even the X flare range throughout the day. A couple of coronal holes there getting ready to turn and face the Earth. Really not concerned too much about those. I don't think they're going to enhance too much in terms of the space weather activity here on Earth. Uh, but they're still forecasting maybe some unsettled conditions here over the next couple days in terms of uh, the uh, KP index and the auroras, which right now are very, very minimal. Quiet. All right, Storm Prediction Center out here today. Severe weather, <clears throat> not a huge risk. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got the, uh, looks like, 2% zone of tornado probability down here across Louisiana. Um... That looks to be the only threat there for the uh, tornadoes. We've got wind and maybe some hail back in Texas. Uh, so if you're out there in the marginal risk area today, just keep an eye on the sky. Uh, far as numerical models go, been hearing a lot of chatter about these uh, storm systems that are supposed to come in and slam the West Coast with uh, 100 inches of rainfall. <laughs> I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. The models have kind of backed off. If we look at the uh, west coast here, this is the current run. Put this into motion. We've got a weaker system coming in on the weekend. Uh, and then our super duper strong system that you know we were looking at a couple nights ago uh, is breaking up, at least on the GFS model. Not, not really holding consistently. And then after that, uh, it dries off, and then we get a different pattern out here. So that's a GFS model. The ECMWF model here shows a little bit more active wetter pattern here as we head towards the end of January and February, first February. Uh, but it's not quite as intense as the original runs had for the uh, West Coast. So it's just it's a ways out there. You know, we really can't... Uh, I take this with a grain of salt, so to speak. We have to make sure that uh, not jumping too far in here. It just gives us a kind of gives us a little general pattern overview of what could take place. I'm hoping the GFS run will become a little bit more consistent with the ECMWF model here uh, in terms of rainfall because uh, we still need uh, quite a bit of rainfall. February, January, February, some of our wettest months here of the year in California. And then the March, hopefully we'll get March as well. After that, things start to cook, and then we look at 80s, 90s, and 100s uh, as we head in towards spring and summertime. Not looking forward to that. All right, guys, I am out of here. Um, looks like the Hot Caves Hawaii station is offline there in Hawaii, but uh, all the other seismograph stations here look fairly quiet for now. Stay safe out there and enjoy your Wednesday. Friday is right around the corner, so we can make it. I'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening. Take care.